right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you back to the best podcast on the planet. I know that we do not usually have a lot of guests on our show, but today is an exception. We have the esteemed guest, Thomas Claycomb. Wow, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, it's great for you to be here. Now, I want to dig a little deeper than most other podcasts and ask you some of the deeper personal questions. Is that all right? Uh, okay. Go ahead. Now, we've been living in a strange world, now more than ever. I did a little bit of research on you, and I found out during your elementary school days, you were, let's say, a little bit of a slower learner. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures of some personal friends of mine, and I want your honest opinion and if you think they have the same problem as you, okay? Okay. Now, based on this picture alone, what would you say about this person? Man, I got nothing. You could be right, but I don't know. To me, he looks like somebody who's only average or just okay at wrestling. I don't know. Probably not that good. Yeah, I get that kind of vibe too. Now, what would you think about this person? Man, why are you pulling out all the hard ones? Uh, I, I have no idea. I've never seen this person before. Um, if I had to take a guess though, I... <laughs> He strikes me as somebody who would write their literacy narrative about Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely see that happening. Yes, you are correct. Well, there you have it, folks. That was a great interview. I'd like to thank every single member in our live studio audience and a special thanks to my esteemed guest over here. Now, we're whoa, gonna be wait, having- Wait, wait, a... whoa. You didn't even ask me any questions. Is is that really it? You're just going to you're just going to sit me down here, ask me some stupid things and then just leave? Can I at least tell you more about why I wasn't the best at school when I was younger? You want to you want to continue Uh <clears throat> All right. Uh I have here that when you were younger, you used to hate reading and writing. Is that true? Well, yeah, yeah it was, especially during middle school. I would often find myself behind other students, never on purpose though. I would always try my best to take extra notes and study whenever possible, but it always seemed like it was never good enough. Like, like for example, an assignment that would take a normal person about 10 minutes would typically take me about 30 to 40. <sighs> Yeah, I get you there. I had some issues with school when, myself when I was younger, especially English class. I always could never think of the words to say or what to write down. Creative writing was my the bane of my existence. Whoa, uh, me too. Uh, I guess we have a lot in common then. Yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that, yeah. Anyways, English was always the hardest class for me. I remember I would often feel like I was understanding the topics during class, but when it came to actually applying them to homework, it was like I was a deer in the headlights. I had no idea what was going on, and it was just the worst. But uh, what mainly tripped me up was creative writing. I could never think of the words to use or how to make an interesting story. For the life of me, I couldn't, and it went on like this for the longest time, for almost as long as I can remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I get you. Well, a new year of school started, and the, in the sea of familiar faces, there was one teacher I didn't recognize. I remember not putting much thought into it at the time, and I just kept going along with my day. It was the usual slog through classes and the usual dread surmounting about it, the classes to come, especially English class, because I knew that this year was just going to be the worst. I wasn't particularly excited for any of them, but that one definitely had me worried. I vividly remember walking into the English classroom and seeing that new teacher there. We all took our seats, and when the class was about to begin, she stood up to introduce herself, and I remember her saying, Hi, I am your new English teacher, Miss Walker. I hope we can have a fun year. You have to know what it's like to be at a school and you have a brand new teacher that nobody knows anything about. You, just these constant barrage of questions like, is she mean? Is she, is she nice? Uh, does she grade papers difficult? Mainly just, will it be fun? Well, so then what changed? 
I couldn't exactly point what changed. I just knew that something was different. Instead of her standing in front of the class, giving her usual lecture for an hour, and then us leaving and doing the homework just to repeat it the next day, she would actually have us play these games instead. Whoa, hang on a second. Games? What are we talking, like little kid games? Like tic-tac-toe? Or like, Kahoot? Cause Kahoot's awesome. Well, that's kind of what I thought at first. But she made them in a fun way. Eventually, I found myself actually looking forward to playing them. I understand. Well, then what? I, I do know it's a little bit silly, but I feel like I was actually learning more from the games than I ever did through any other lecture in any class, but especially English. I felt like I was learning just miles and miles beyond what I was doing before. Well, so that fixed your problems, right? Like. Those games helped you be better at school, right? Or, right? Okay, uh, they kind of fixed the problem, but it did not fix every problem I had. I still could not grasp a lot of the topics she was teaching at the time. And apparently it was really obvious to everyone, especially the teacher. So one day after class, as I was packing up my things and as everyone was getting ready to leave, she came over to me and told me to stay behind because she had a few questions for me and she wanted to talk to me. Now, <laughs> at this moment, I was completely floored. I was like scared out of my mind. I know I didn't actually do anything wrong, but when a teacher tells you to stay behind because they want to talk to you, your mind just immediately goes to the worst place. So I go over to her and she points at the desk across from hers. She says, take a seat. So I sit down. And she gets up and comes over and she asks me this question. Do you like English class? Now, at the time, I was thinking, well, I don't at all. So how am I supposed to tell my English teacher that I hate this class and I hate this topic? I didn't know what to say. So I just mumbled under my breath. Yeah, it, it's OK, I guess. And her response was weird to me. And she said, when I was your age, I hated English class with a passion. I remember thinking, why would an English teacher hate the subject that she teaches? It doesn't make any sense to me. But then she continues and says, over the years, I've had countless people help me along the way to help me understand that I love English to reading and writing. It's what I was born to do. So I just sit there and I'm lost for words. I don't know what to say. And she says, I can tutor you if you want. All you have to do is ask. So I go home and I give it the night to think about it. And that night I was laying in my bed thinking, well, everything that I've done so far has not helped me whatsoever. So if this person is offering to give me a hand, I might as well at least try it. So I wake up the next day, get ready for school, uh, wind up going to classes. They were the usual garbage that they always were. And by the time I get to English class, it's just a normal class as it always was. And then after I went up to the teacher, Miss Walker, and I asked her, hey, do you think you can give me a hand on this assignment? And she smiles and tells me to, all right, where would you like to get started? Now to say that she helped me in English class, would be a massive understatement. She definitely did help me, but it was more like she taught me how to think outside the box and come up with these creative ideas for just any problem that I would have. It was less of a tutoring class for English, and she taught me more about myself and life. The main thing that she would always talk about in her class and during the tutoring sessions was how she wanted to treat people with kindness. She, she was a believer that uh, treat people the way that you want to be treated. Now, at the time, I didn't quite understand what she meant, but I try to live by that to this day. Now, granted, sometimes I slip up, but I always try to do my best to make sure nobody is excluded or left out. My dream would be able to do what she did for me and pass that along to somebody else, to inspire somebody to uh, tackle a topic that they hated for the longest amount of time and then approach it from a different angle with a new light or uh, just have them appreciate it for what it is.
instead of be turned off by it immediately because they don't like it or understand it. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have for today. Thank you, Mr. Thomas Claycomb, for sharing your words of wisdom and that amazing story. I'd like to personally thank everyone watching in our live studio audience and for you watching this podcast. You are the reason we are here. All right. Now, give a wave to everyone and have a good night. Good night. Right, See you bye. later. Thanks for watching.